Take a look at this encounter. Sacramento man comes face to face with a man breaking into his truck with a stolen machete in his hands. Ryan Savino says he ran to his garage after he got an alert on his security camera. And yeah, when you got to get up and check, you got to go with what you have. He managed to chase the suspect out with a baseball bat wearing nothing but his underwear. Savino says he's frustrated because it's not the first time he's had a break in. He had taken the machete out of my truck and was actually brandishing it at me as I came towards him. Um, it's not really super safe. I don't want to condone actually confronting individuals like this, but I'm, I'm pretty fed up with it as it is. Suspect left behind a bike. Savino says police took it away and they are investigating. Well, a tow truck driver is accused in a, hit, in a hit and run while under the influence. Rancho Cordova police say that the crash happened last week at Sunrise Boulevard in Zinfandel Drive. They tracked down the driver in a nearby city. No one was hurt in the crash. A community event happening tonight at a Sacramento park that was the scene of a devastating shooting death one year ago. CBS 13's Valina Jones is live at Mama Marks Park with how people are coming together. Valina. Well, in just about an hour, we will start to see cars lining the street here on Roanoke Avenue. We see police just got here about an hour ahead of this event. It's a truck or treat event, so we'll be seeing kids with their best costumes looking for sweet treats. But tonight is much more about candy, much more than about candy. It's about building relationships and making the community feel safe here. The now yearly event is part of a community outreach to help police connect with people in the neighborhood. This comes a little more than a year after tragedy took over this park. You might remember nine-year-old Michaela Brent was shot and killed here in October of last year while she was playing at the park in a drive-by shooting. Now, it's a case that significantly impacted the community and led to city council looking to make changes. The council committing to installing security cameras, lights, and developing gang intervention task forces to combat crime in the area. Tonight's event was started in in response to Michaela's murder. You can see a year later, her memorial is still here as a reminder of what the neighborhood lost. The community hoping to bring more security to this neighborhood. Now, tonight's event starts at 6 o'clock, and they hope to make this a yearly event going forward. Yeah, making changes with heavy hearts. Selena, thanks. We'll talk to you soon with more as people start to show up there. A Sierra rescue during yesterday's heavy snowfall. Now, Tahoe Nordic search and rescue said they used plows to get at the top of Barker Pass. Look at all that snow. They had to help a driver who had made it up during the heavy rain, only to wake up surrounded by snow. You can see it came up to the windows of the van right there. So, yeah, go to sleep with rainfall and then wake up and go, I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. Well, the first nor'easter of the season has started soaking the East Coast, bringing with it heavy rain and wind. More than 30 million people are currently under a flash flood watch. If you're out on our roads and come across a flooded section, please just turn around. Flooded roads can have currents swift enough to wash a car and its passengers away. Heavy winds are expected to cause widespread power outages as well. And Massachusetts Cape Cod could see hurricane force wind gusts. Wow. Yeah. Now they don't need the rain there. I was lucky enough to go back there recently, yeah. and everything is so green and beautiful, mm -hmm. just like it is here now. It is. Yes. You know what? Great to see. I, I, you could set your watch right now. The grasses are going to start to grow that have been browned out by, in another couple of weeks, you're going to really start mm -hmm. to see it. So we got some green stuff coming. All right. Let's talk about the fact that we're losing the green stuff on the radar. So, bottom line is we're drying things. Out. We're going to clear those skies out as we get to Wednesday, and then after that, it's a walk on the mild side. It's not super toasty, but it's super comfortable. Maybe a little below where you'd expect to be, but all in all, very fall like. And then after that, we're wrapping up the month with a look at Halloween and the first couple of days in November. Let's go to our Holiday in Sacramento downtown arena camera. Looking off to the south and west, you can see the river there, the Sacramento River. And of course, we do have a few breaks to in the cloud shield down there, but not enough to make for a, a really great sunset. But you might get something depending on where you are. All right. Well, you'll get a sunset because the sun's going down, but it just depends on what the sunset looks like. 65 currently in Sacramento, 64 Stockton, 65 Modesto, 63 for Marysville. Humidity at this hour is at 50%, dew points mid 40s, wind south. Southwest almost 10, barometric pressure rising 30.1.
one nine. So you've got the clouds, and we'll continue with mostly cloudy conditions tonight. We do have a little wet weather up to the north here, and it's going to ride over the top of the ridge of high pressure. And as it rides over the top, uh, we'll eventually have a slight chance, like the northern foothills, of maybe something after midnight in the form of a little bit of wet weather. But we're talking about clouds to start, and then the skies clearing out in a very fall-like day with just a hint of a northwest wind tomorrow. Daytime highs in the upper 60s to the lower 70s, and then we're probably in the 70 to 75 degree range for a couple of days. Then we'll cool down just a little bit, pick up some clouds, but at this point, it looks like we're high and dry. Maybe early next month, something trying to get in here, but we'll fine tune that as we get closer. But we do have a dry and just kind of a, a cool and kind of cloudy weekend coming up, but that's okay because it's Halloween and maybe it'll make it feel a little extra spooky for you. So, upper 60s near 70 tomorrow for Wednesday. Northwest winds about 15, so a nice fall day in the northern San Joaquin Valley. Low 70s for Vacaville, upper 60s for Sacramento. We should be averaging on into the low mid 70s. In a lot of spots, so a little below average, but give or take, this is a nice time of year to have temperatures right around the 70 degree mark. You're in the 60s, it's pretty nice up there into the foothills. Uh, 61 for Pollock Pines, you've got 67 around Auburn. Up toward Plumas County, you're going to end up with clearing skies up there, so you have some clouds to start, then fair skies and light winds, and highs will be in the upper 50s and low 60s. Same thing, you'll start out with, for the most part, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy, then sunshine by the afternoon, highs in the mid 50s to low 60s. So some snow melt's going to pick up up there as you keep temperatures on the mild side. About 70 over toward Monterey, and then up toward San Francisco, we'll have partly cloudy conditions there, giving way to fair skies by the afternoon. 68 in San Francisco, mid 70s for Fairfield. So, seven day forecast, upper 60s, low 70s as we roll on into the last weekend of October. Here's Halloween, upper 60s, so mostly cloudy skies, and then something could be coming into the forecast Monday, Tuesday. You can kind of see that reflected over toward the coast and up in the Sierra. So, we'll fine tune that as we get closer to the uh, early days of November. But prior to that, we're wrapping up October everywhere, feeling very much like fall and super comfortable. Tony. All right, Dave, thanks. Not even Halloween yet, right? But the Capitol Christmas tree is already on its way to Washington, D.C. The tree was harvested from the Six Rivers National Forest near Eureka. The 84 foot white fir was nicknamed Sugar Bear. It'll be on display on the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol building. Still ahead at five, another side effect of the pandemic, the sudden surge in organ transplants and what researchers say is behind it. Watch CBS San Sacramento on Roku. It's so easy. Go to CBS13.com slash Roku for step-by-step -step instructions. I'm going to give you another check and check on the microphone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know. I haven't done anything different. I don't know. What's going on? I'm going to push this way.
Sacramento is within a half penny of its all-time record for gas prices. And we call on Curtis Ming with exactly why. This is really painful. 60 bucks today to fill up uh, my car. If you're rounding up, we are now paying on average $4.50 a gallon in Sacramento, and that is the all-time high setback in 2008. Oil just topped $85 a barrel for the first time in seven years, and we're now learning during the storm a couple refineries in the Bay Area had to cut production, and already a Benicia refinery uh, it was uh, brought down for scheduled maintenance. Now, with a ban on some drilling, the U.S. is producing less oil than before the pandemic. The Energy Department says there are no immediate plans to tap into emergency reserves. Remember, just a year and a half ago, gas was trading at negative prices when suppliers ran out of space to store oil. A system upgrade has left members of Golden One Credit Union struggling to log into their accounts. The company says it is working to bring all systems back up after a Sunday upgrade. People report long wait times on the phone and in branches. The credit union just announced it's extending its call center hours from 4 in the morning to 10 at night. Well, we are getting more comfortable with going out. Bankrate found 61% of us plan to attend a live event by the end of the year. And the CDC is getting rid of its COVID rules for cruises. Starting in January, the order requiring 95% of passengers be vaccinated will become just a recommendation. Up until late last year, cruises could not sail. They were under a no sail order. And United Airlines says some of its vaccinated workers do not want to fly with those who did not get shots. Six workers are suing the airline after it put them on leave for not having the shot. Last month, the United said about 2,000 of its 67,000 workers applied for a medical or religious exemption. Curtis, thanks. Another pandemic side effect that's surprising doctors. Heavy drinking became so much more common that the need for liver transplants soared. Yeah, that's according to a new study. Researchers found the number of people who got a liver transplant or were on a waiting list due to alcoholic hepatitis was 50% higher than expected. It often takes years of heavy drinking to cause that condition, but sometimes it can happen after a short period of excess. Vaping marijuana has drastically increased in popularity among teens you might know, doubling between 2013 and 2020. Researchers say one in three high school seniors reported doing it. The big concern here is they prefer vaping cannabis extract, which contains higher THC levels, leading to more intense highs. Our one hour of news at five continues right now with Curtis and Adrian. All right, thanks you two. We continue to follow that breaking news from North Lake Tahoe, a gas leak forcing evacuations. And the record rainfall has moved out, but it has left behind a big headache for drivers, the pothole problems and how long it could take to make repairs. Plus, soaring prices for just about everything. We were just talking about the gas prices. So is there an end in sight to the rapid inflation? We're getting answers and COVID shots getting the green light for young kids, but parents still have some safety concerns. We are getting answers straight from the White House.
Mm -hmm. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully it's not rubbing. <laughs> CBS 13 News at 5 continues with breaking news. Live pictures now from Kings Beach. This is right at uh, North Lake Boulevard and Highway 267. And you can see on the bottom part of your screen there, an officer is directing traffic. And we do have a hard road closure. A high pressure gas leak is forcing evacuations right now from Beach Street west through Tahoe Vista to National Street. Now, people can evacuate to the west to the Plumas Bank location there in Tahoe City. Now, to the east, you want to go to the Kings Beach Convention Center. All right, we're keeping our eye on this right now. You can see this is right on the north side of the lake, but uh, this is right on the west end there of, of Kings Beach, uh, and there are a lot of businesses right along that area. And uh, once again, just to give you that location, the Plumas Bank is in Tahoe City. That's the evacuation area on the west. And then, as Adrian was saying, on the uh, east side, uh, you could go to the Kings Beach Convention Center. At this point, we do not know what caused that gas leak, but they are nervous about it and they want everybody out of that area until they get the situation under control. Now, this after a massive storm dumped a historic amount of rain across the region, the Sacramento County Department of Transportation is busy fixing all those potholes. Thanks for staying with us at 5 30. I'm Curtis Ming. And I'm Adrian Moore. Our news is also streaming live on CBSN Sacramento. So, how long does it take to get potholes fixed? And what about city roads and the highway? CBS 13's Renee Santos live in Wilton getting answers for us tonight. Hi, Renee. Hi, Curtis. Just look at how thick this piece of concrete is. It was removed from a pothole here on Alta Mesa Road just hours ago, and it gives you an idea of how deep that pothole was before it was filled. And there was multiple on this stretch of road. I think some of the worst ones are right over this hill right here. Just over the hill on Alta Mesa Road in Wilton, part of the street crumbles. Drivers try to dodge this deep pothole in the middle of the road. Some unlucky hitting the deteriorating concrete. They damaged my car. I hate getting them fixed. Drone 13 flying above the road, showing just how bad the potholes had become. The Sacramento County Department of Transportation working all day on repairs. Responding to a long list of calls to 311. It goes on a list, but are some of those roads prioritized and how? We have various ways to figure out just how we want to handle them. Matt Robinson with the county says potholes are prioritized based on the age of the road, if they are impacting traffic in a large intersection, or have caused accidents in the past. He says typically repairs are done in 72 hours. Just last year, 70,000 potholes were filled. But what about the highways? Caltrans tells CBS 13 crews typically repair 75,000 potholes annually statewide, costing between three to 6,000 per permanent fix and can take up to 72 hours. As for the city, crews responded to 4,619 requests for repairs at an average cost of $39.29 per repair, taking about the same amount of time to get the pothole filled. Hallelujah. Jill Curtis is happy to see the repairs near her home. They're horrible. I ride a motorcycle, so for me, uh, you know, it's really dangerous because it could actually make you wreck they're that deep. Never soon enough, but, you know, super glad when they can. And here's another up close look at that piece of concrete that was removed from a pothole. Just imagine hitting something like this while driving on the road. At times, you may not even have a warning that you're about to hit a pothole. Now, to report a pothole in the county or city, all you have to do is call 311. Now, as for the highway, Caltrans says you can make that report online.
Well, that chunk right there really tells the story. Renee, thanks so much. Another post-storm issue, lost pets. Dogs and cats sometimes escape yards during severe weather, of course, and that's why the Bradshaw Animal Shelter is waiving redemption fees for owners who lost their furry friends. Owners will have to show proof of ownership, though, to claim them. Well, we've taken in a lot of stray lost dogs from Sunday the 24th when the storm was really bad through November 1st. We're not charging for redemption fees for any animal that was lost during that time frame. The lost pet list is updated every 30 minutes on the county's website. Some major improvements coming to the American River Parkway, $12 million worth. The money is being used for new concessions building and kayak and paddleboard rentals at Sutter's Landing, plus more restrooms, a boat launch, and an observation deck. Now this, from gas to meat, the price of nearly everything is going up, and I bet you're feeling it. According to the Labor Department, the cost of living in the U.S. rose in September, and the Consumer Price Index rose four-tenths of a percent last month. Prices also going up on an annual basis, rising to more than 5%. That is the biggest jump since 1991. So how long will these high prices last? We spoke to Sac State Finance Professor Sanjay Varshanai to get the answers. This is not going to be resolved in the next few weeks uh, because when we see stubborn inflation like 5% plus consistently for several months and the supply chain disruption the way we are seeing it right now, this is going to take a few months to sort out. Yeah, he says supply chain issues are not going to be resolved by Christmas and that uh, means empty shelves during holiday shopping season. The FDA's advisory committee gave the green light today for emergency use authorization of the Pfizer vaccine for kids 5 to 11. Last week, the Biden administration outlined its plan to vaccinate those kids, but parents still have a lot of questions. CBS 13 investigative reporter Julie Watts is getting answers, and she's getting those answers straight from the White House. Yeah, guys, the White House tells us vaccination for kids ages 5 to 11 could begin as early as next Wednesday, November 3rd. But in the meantime, there are some lingering questions. So that things could return back to normal. Eight year old Joshua was among the 2,268 kids ages 5 to 11 that participated in Pfizer's phase two and three COVID vaccine trials. A relatively small sample size that will grow once the vaccine gets FDA emergency use authorization for that age group. The little kid's dose is about a third of the adult dose. Higher doses have been associated with higher risk of side effects, which has some asking. What's being done to ensure the little kids don't accidentally get the adult dose? Yeah, so thank you for bringing that, uh, that up. White House so vaccinations coordinator, now, Dr. Bashir. Sarah Shukair explains the grown up doses come with a purple cap. The caps on the kids' doses are orange. He says the kids' packages will also have smaller syringes. And no, according to Pfizer, you can't just use a third of the purple capped adult dose on kids instead. Their dose must come from the orange vial. And it's really important that we continue educating um, uh, pharmacists, doctors' offices, community health centers, so that people are aware of the new. A packaging that this vaccine is coming for kids 5 to 11. The White House announced last week they've already secured enough child doses for the 28 million kids ages 5 to 11, and HHS plans to embark on a public education campaign. Notably, the FDA announced last week that the benefits of the vaccine in younger children outweigh the risk, but some are still hesitant. What's the administration's message to parents who say, well, that's not a ringing endorsement? Well, look, I just would remind everybody the process is still playing out. He notes more information is expected over the next week. In addition to the FDA advisory committee, which focuses on efficacy and safety, the CDC's advisory committee will meet next week to issue recommendations for actual clinical use. Julie, thank you. Still ahead on CBS 13 and streaming on CBS and Sacramento. Movie set safety, the mistakes made before the deadly shooting, and how the pandemic could have played a role. And a chemical spill in a busy neighborhood the moment it happened and the search for the person who caused it. Sacramento called one of the rattiest cities where we ranked and the other California city that made the list.
Haven't received your state stimulus money yet? The Franchise Tax Board says payments should hit your bank account by the end of this week. Paper checks will not make it out until the end of the year. So far, 4.5 million payments have gone out. About 9 million Californians qualify. A new plan to unclog the supply chain backup is underway off the coast of California. The ports of L.A. and Long Beach will now fine companies whose containers linger at the terminals there. Containers for trucks have nine days until these fines kick in, and then it is $100 per container per day. Those meant for trains have only three days before the same fines begin. Thousands of high school athletes could be sidelined in the L.A. Unified School District by the end of this week. The district says 30 percent of students have yet to provide proof of COVID vaccination. And if they don't meet the mandate by the end of the month, they could be dropped from sports teams or other after-school activities. They'll be banned from campus altogether if they don't comply by the end. You know, we're not forcing this on, on anybody. You know, we feel uh, as a district uh, that's in line with the state and uh, you know, federal government that vaccination is the clear path to uh, returning to school safely uh, back to normal. That principal says he's already seen a decrease in positive cases among students. According to the CDC, unvaccinated teens are 10 times more likely to be hospitalized with COVID compared to those who have gotten the shots. A chemical spill at a gas station leads to a hazmat cleanup down south while the driver who caused this could now face criminal charges. Sacramento makes a dirty list. The infestation giving the city some unwanted attention. Dave? All right, skies are going to be clearing out. So what does it mean for your Wednesday? And are we staying high and dry as we wrap up the month of October and head into November? We'll answer all those questions coming up in just a couple of minutes. See you then. Live pictures from Kings Beach, where we are just learning the uh, the gas leak is uh, is capped. It's no longer an issue there, and uh, so you can still see that they are uh, the CHP is directing traffic here right on North Lake Boulevard. This is right at uh, North Lake and Highway 267. 
Yeah, the evacuation orders that were in place in that area have been lifted. Again, this is all because of a high pressure gas leak that was reported uh, within the last hour or so. The North Tahoe Fire Protection District uh, just putting out on social media a few moments ago that this leak has been secured. They're now working with Liberty Utilities to restore power to that area. Uh, those evacuations were along Beach Street, west through Tahoe Vista, all the way down to National Street. But we are learning again those evacuation. Orders have been lifted. The area is just now starting to reopen to traffic. A hazmat cleanup underway in LA after a flatbed truck spills hundreds of gallons of an unknown chemical. Jake Reiner spoke to a man who watched the spill happen. Blue barrels knocked over like pins after a strike in bowling, and green goo straight out of a Ghostbusters movie. It was loud and seemed like uh, the containers kept falling off. You could hear them one at a time. Corey Yaguchi had the perfect view from the Arco station on Jefferson at 8 a.m. Tuesday morning. The LA Fire Department says a flatbed truck strapped with 55 gallon barrels made a bad turn and crashed. Ten drums flew off. One of them struck a bystander. And I seen liquid splashing all over the tamale guy. The guy was sopping wet. Didn't get in his eyes, but. He was sopping wet. Firefighters say that man was not injured, but taken to a hospital as a precaution. Yaguchi says he saw the two men in the truck hop out, secure the remaining barrels, and take off. As for the green slime they left behind? It appeared to be an industrial detergent, similar to a commercial hand soap that was coming out of the drums. As innocent as that sounds, firefighters and law enforcement, including the DOJ and LA Impact, still wanted to do a number of tests just to be safe. Ultimately, all of the additional testing came back as negative. Negative for hazardous materials, negative on a corrosive substance, and negative on any drug. Well, the LAPD is investigating it as a hit and run. Inspectors at Lake Tahoe have intercepted a record number of boats carrying invasive species. The program has kept more than two dozen boats from the water, preventing the mussels and other aquatic creatures from making their way into the lake. Inspectors say if they did, they could wreak havoc on the lake's fragile ecosystem. Leaders say the record number is due to the surge in the number of boaters headed to Tahoe. Well, they're not an invasive species, but they're definitely not wanted. And Sacramento's making the list nobody wants to be on. Rat infestations. The capital city ranking number 29 on Orkin's annual list of the top 50 rattiest cities in America. And you know what? We're up seven spots from last year. The company comes up with the rankings based on the number of rodent calls. San Francisco came in at number five, LA number two, and uh, Chicago. Stay away. That's the top spot. Oh, poor Chicago. Coming up at six o'clock, I'm doing the uh, first rat cast. Yeah. Oh, please don't. Rat cast. No, please don't. I just don't. remember a couple years ago when they were running that night through Cesar Chavez Park, and we were on rat patrol down there oh trying God. to capture them, and it wasn't all that hard. There were so they many were the of them. The size yeah. of small animals. Yeah. I mean, not like small they are cats. small animals, yeah. but like cats. Yeah. Exactly. That's hey, true. a little wet weather to talk mm -hmm. about. All right. So we've got it up to the north and to the west, and it looks like it's going to stay out of our hair, although some of this may try to hold together into the northern portion of the foothills after midnight. Might be a sprinkle, but we'll lose this and end up with Clearing skies and a really nice fall like day from the coast all the way up to the high country. Let's go to Modesto and see what it looks like here on our Tuesday. Look at that, just a little portion of the cloud shield down there. Let's take a look at our temperatures and see how we're doing. Pretty comfortable as we go on through the show here. Mid 60s, well, we should be more like the mid 70s, but I'll take that. We'll get to the upper 60s and lower 70s for tomorrow. Right now, we've got 65 in Sacramento, 64 Stockton. 65 Modesto, 63 Marysville. Humidity is at 50%. Winds are southwest at 9. Barometric pressure is rising at 30.19. So high pressure is going to build in. It's going to keep this up and away, although it might drag something into the northern portions there of the foothills and maybe up in Plumas County, northeastern corner, a little later on tonight. We'll also get some northwest winds to go along with this. I mean, we're not talking a lot, maybe 5 to 10, but it'll feel like fall tomorrow under fair skies. Everyone's going to get pretty much sunshine as we go on into the afternoon and daytime highs in the upper 60s and low 70s for the next several days. And right here, some cloud cover. We'll talk about what that means for the last weekend of October and Halloween here 
in just a second. So cloudy skies, upper 50s near 60 degrees, so actually kind of mild at around 10 o'clock. Then cool to start, we'll get down into the mid 50s, and then as we hit the afternoon, we're going to end up with the skies clearing out and looking pretty good, feeling fine. Some spots into the lower 70s and upper 60s. Let's take a look at the Central Valley. We're going to do this. Mostly cloudy conditions tonight for most locations. As we get into tomorrow morning, we'll still have a few clouds around and we'll have light winds. It'll be a calm start, upper 40s, cooler spots, mid 40s. And then by the afternoon, upper 60s to the lower 70s, clearing skies. And that's the wrong number. That should be a little warmer than that. So <laughs> that's why I should double check all the graphics. All right. So pleasant temperatures, low 50s, light winds tonight at 10 o'clock. We're going to continue to have some cloud cover to get ourselves started tomorrow morning. Slight chance of a little wet weather after midnight. I mean, a slight chance, just in case something hits like Nevada City, Grass Valley. Then after that, we're going to end up mostly sunny conditions, temperatures running on into the mid 50s, on into the lower 60s. And then by the afternoon, up here, we got a cool evening for 43 degrees. And as we get toward the afternoon, we'll have light winds all the way through. And as we get there, we'll end up daytime highs where we could start to melt off a little bit of snow up there in the higher elevations and plenty of sunshine up there in the Sierra. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. And there you go lower 70s, upper 60s. There's Halloween looking pretty good under mostly cloudy skies. Early next week, and we'll see how it comes together, but something may be coming into the forecast to generate a little bit of wet weather. But at this point, we're high and dry here in the valley. Adrian? All right, Dave, thanks. Uh -huh. Keeping movie sets safe, the precautions skipped on Alex. Baldwin's movie that may have led to the deadly shooting. And hi, everyone. I'm Tony Lopez coming up on the CBS 13 News at 6. A former police chief admits to selling fake badges, what he allowed fake cops to do. Plus, we're learning more about the Los Gatos mom accused of throwing sex fueled teenage parties, what parents say she used to lure the teens in. Stay with us. Oh, you're not going to use the map. Okay. 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 They're not going to use it. Okay. Test. Test. Test, 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 test. Gary Tuckman. Hi, Mike Check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first season of the Netflix series about the life of former NFL player Colin Kaepernick is about to debut. The drama series is called Colin in Black and White. The filmmaker co-created the show with Kaepernick as it follows his teen years at Pittman High in Turlock and the challenges he faced growing up as an adopted child of white parents. 
Well, you know, we used his life as a, as a springboard, his early life as a springboard to talk about larger conversations about race, class, identity, uh, respectability. Mm -hmm. um, and so he was very generous and just allowed us to kind of excavate those early years. Colin in Black and White begins airing this Friday on Netflix, and Kaepernick narrates the series. San Francisco's only in and out is under investigation again after reports of people eating inside the restaurant. The Department of Health is investigating claims the restaurant at Fisherman's Wharf is allowing customers to eat inside despite being permitted for takeout and outdoor dining only. The restaurant was shut down for several days last week after refusing to check customers' vaccine cards, which is a violation of a city mandate. A veteran prop master says he turned down a job on the Alec Baldwin film Rust over some serious red flags. The film was in production when its cinematographer was killed last week by a prop gun fired by Baldwin. The prop master says he was concerned over how producers combine the positions of assistant prop master and armor into one job. Investigators say Baldwin was given the gun by the assistant director who grabbed one of three weapons set up by the armor that were left in a cart outside the structure due to COVID restrictions. And, of course, there's still a lot of questions surrounding this deadly accident. Yeah, Gary Tuckman spoke with a Hollywood expert about the precautions that should be taken on a movie set. Two, one. Larry Zanoff is a renowned motion picture armorer, a weapon safety specialist in the entertainment industry. We're at the Independent Studio Services Prop House north of Los Angeles. Props, which they say include North America's largest private armory. Safety in the industry starts with a lockbox for weapons. The gun that we're going to use is inside here. This is a single action revolver. You can see that at the moment it's empty. This is what a blink looks like. It's a cartridge case that's crimped over. You can see there's no projectile. No bullet or projectile. No bullet or projectile. But it has gunpowder. It does have gunpowder, right. has a primer in it. This is what's called a modern theatrical blank. What looks like a typical bullet is sometimes used, for example, to show a tight shot of a gun being loaded in a movie or TV show. But under safety regulations, such a bullet is a dummy cartridge, uh, empty shell case, no gunpowder in it, totally inert primer. It can't go bang. There is a projectile on the end of it, bullet. but you can see. Yep. There's a BB. I can rattle it next to your ear. It shows there's no gunpowder in it. It means that cannot go bang. There are many other mandated precautions. So we have our single action revolver. We have our blank cartridge. You can see there's no projectile. I've measured out 20 feet for you here, which is the minimum safety distance on a film set. We have a target there. I'm going to load up the blank into the gun, and I'm going to announce that the gun is hot. So hot gun on set. And it's a hot gun when there's something in the gun, in the chambers, that will go bang. Correct. If the gun's going to go bang, it's a hot gun. If it's empty and it can't go bang, it's a cold gun. We're going to go three, two, one. I'm going to unload the gun now. Presumably they've yelled cut. And then I make, as the armor, the announcement, cold weapon on set, cold weapon on set. Some interesting insight there. Alec Baldwin says he is cooperating with the investigation. The CBS 13 News at 6 starts now. And now at 6, unafraid and in his undies, a man speaks out after confronting a thief in his garage. And trunk or treat, the Halloween event bringing the community together after a deadly drive-by shooting. How officials hope to increase safety in the area. But first, an early start to ski season at South Lake Tahoe. Time-lapse video from earlier this afternoon shows the clouds pass it on through as one of the resorts gets set to reopen this weekend while another is still recovering from the Caldor fire. How it's impacting business. Lots to get to tonight. Good evening. I'm Tony Lopez. And I'm Adrian Moore. Thanks for joining us here at 6 o'clock. Our news is also streaming live on CBSN Sacramento right now. CBS 13's Marissa Perlman is at Sierra at Tahoe, which is off limits for now. Sierra at Tahoe is closed for now. The West Bowl area of the resort was badly damaged by the Caldor fire. Now damage assessments are underway and no one is allowed on property besides staff and work crews. And there's no word yet on when the rest of the mountain will reopen. 
Fresh coats of powder cover the Sierra at Tahoe Resort from the historic storm that rolled through last weekend. Right now, the resort is in the process of digging out, but this year's ski season will be different. Sierra announcing part of the resort will be off limits this winter. It's been a wild ride. The news is a grim reminder of the wildfire season that tore through and the nearby businesses like Fresh Pond, who depend on rollover business from the resort's opening. Where it looks like there's no hope there is. Martha Borges is hopeful for tourist traffic to drive a busy winter season. I am ready. We're ready for it. She geared up the store. We got our sleds in, so we are fully stocked for sleds and snow boots. And hoping for winter guests to stop by. We're kind of like a, the main stop before people go up to Tahoe. That's awesome. Also relying on snow bums, Courtney Wolf at the pizza factory in Pollock Pines. For eight years, she served up slices during ski season. But we kind of count on everyone coming up on Friday nights and then driving back down on Sunday. The business donated pizza to first responders during the Calder firefight. And now, despite the unknown of what will reopen, they're hopeful for a winter flood of business. If there was only to be like a half of a season, then we'd only kind of get half of the rush to go up here. All of the powder on these trees is certainly a welcome sight. We're told the replacement cable for chairlifts is being made in Switzerland, but there's still no word yet on when it will arrive. Sure is pretty up there. Marissa, thanks. Palisades Tahoe Ski Resort, formerly known as Squaw, says it is opening on Friday. Now, Sugar Bowl also saying it has seen three feet of snow over a 36 hour period. So that sets the stage for Dave tracking the conditions up in the mountains. How's it looking? Well, so far, so good. A lot of snow up there. Obviously, some spots pushing three feet. Of course, those are where we measure this stuff. Some of the tops of the mountains most likely got even more than that. Right now, down in South Lake Tahoe, we got partly cloudy skies, 37 degrees, snow on the ground there. And it feels like 32 because you got just a little bit of a wind out of the south, five to six. So a bit of a wind chill in the high country. All right, so we basically, for the most part, will continue to have some cloud cover up there tonight. Any of this moisture here is going to miss us and go up and over the top. We're going to start out with cloudy conditions as we head on into our Wednesday, and then the skies should clear out totally with bluebird skies and temperatures back into the 50s. Some warmer locations may be pushing toward the upper 50s to lower 60s, so some snow melt could occur, in fact, will occur. So overnight lows down into the 30s. Any of the resorts that are making snow yet uh, can get really can't get started with that because it's really a little too mild. You have to be down into the 20s. But as far as the afternoon goes, if you can't ski on it, you can go up and look at it. Daytime highs, mid to upper 50s in some of the warmer spots. If not, talking low 50s down at the lake. And again, looking at skies clearing out and light winds should be beautiful up there and then their hills. Adrian. Dave, thanks. Uh -huh. Happening now, police are handing out treats over at Mama Mark's Park in Sacramento. It's a park plagued by a tragic event. With that, we go to CBS 13's Melina Jones there with what's being done to bring back the sense of safety, Melina. Yeah, well, trunk or treat is just getting underway. I want to show you what's going on before we get to the safety measures in place. Now, we see uh, Sack Fire coming through right now. We have the Scooby van here, and of course, kids coming through in their costumes. But it is not just about the candy, it's about promoting and strengthening relationships here in this community. Now, tonight's event is part of a community outreach and to help police connect with people in the neighborhood. This comes a year after tragedy. Took over this park. You might remember nine year old Michaela Brent, who was shot and killed here a year ago in October while she was playing at the park in a drive by shooting. Now, this event was created in response to that shooting. It's a case that significantly impacted the community and led to City Council looking to make changes. Now, new security cameras were installed at the park. There's other measures being taken as well that are still in the works, but SAC PD tell me it's been partnerships with community organizations. Organizations that has made a significant impact in the last year. So last year there was a there was a tragic shooting that happened in this very park just before Halloween time, and so it was an opportunity for the police department to partner with the community out here and really have a positive event in this park and just remember that that this is the community's park and we're all here to make sure that that is something that we uh, remember from year to year. SAC PD tell me they are working with community partners and have made significant differences in the last year in reducing crime. Now, police, fire, and community partners will all be here tonight. 
This again is just now getting underway. It just started a couple minutes ago. They will be here until 8 o'clock tonight passing out candy and creating those relationships and bonds here in the neighborhood. Yeah, so important. Festive event with a serious message. Looks like a good showing so far. Valina, thank you.